Hey there, this is a re-recording of the farewell talk that I gave um, last Sunday, I believe it was on the 8th of November 2020. Um, so here goes. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, I am grateful for the chance to speak to you today. I have been called to serve a mission in the Tahiti Papayette Mission. I begin online MTC training December 2nd, and I will be learning and speaking French. For those of you who don't have a chance to know me, I enjoy rice, strategy games, playing brass instruments, and hot tubbing. Today I prepared some thoughts for you in regards to spiritual preparation. I pray that the Spirit will be present with us this morning for those both in attendance and those viewing through video conference, and in this case, those watching this recording. So there are a great many things that we have a, a need to prepare for in this life. For example, you may prepare your home for guests to come in. You may prepare a meal for yourself. You may prepare a presentation for your colleagues and your peers. The gospel is no exception. We have need to prepare. The, the let's, <laughs> excuse me. We need to prepare spiritually for things such as living and proxy ordinances, temple recommend interviews, missionary service, preparing for future trials, and for the second coming of the Lord. Firstly, I'd like to speak of preparation to go to the temple. The temple, as we have been taught, is the house of the Lord. It is a sacred, reverent, and beautiful place. Within, we perform both living and proxy-saving ordinances. We are taught that these sacred ordinances are necessary to entering the celestial kingdom and to live with our families forever. Before we can enter the temple, we must first receive a recommend. In his October 2019 address, Russell M. Nelson said, All requirements to enter the temple relate to personal holiness. To assess that readiness, each person who wants to enjoy the blessings of the temple will have two interviews, first with a bishop, bishopric counselor, or branch president, and second with a stake or mission president or one of his counselors. In the same address, um, President Nelson actually reviewed these questions which had recently been edited and changed a little for clarity. Um, and I'll go over them now with you. Do you have faith in and a testimony of God, the Eternal Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost? Do you have a testimony of the atonement of Jesus Christ and of His role as your Savior and Redeemer? Do you have a testimony of the restoration of the Gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you sustain the President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as the prophet, seer, and revelator, and as the only person authorized, only person on the earth authorized to exercise all priesthood keys? Do you sustain the members of the First Presidency and the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles as prophets, seers, and revelators? Do you sustain the other general authorities and the local leaders of the Church? The Lord has said that all things are to be done in cleanliness before Him. Do you strive for moral cleanliness in your thoughts and behavior? Do you obey the law of chastity? Do you follow the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ in your private and public behavior with members of your family and others? Do you support or promote any teachings, practices, or doctrine contrary to those of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Do you strive to keep the Sabbath day holy, both at home and at church, attend your meetings, prepare for and worthily partake of the sacrament, and live your life in harmony with the laws and commandments of the gospel? Do you strive to be honest in all that you do? Are you a full tithe payer? Do you understand and obey the word of wisdom? And this one didn't apply to me, of, uh, of course. <laughs> um, do you have any financial or other obligations to a former spouse or to children? Um, and if yes, are you currently meeting those obligations? Do you keep the covenants that you made in the temple, including wearing the temple garment as instructed in the endowment? Um, that one also had, didn't apply to me at the moment, as I hadn't gotten to go through the temple. As of recording this, I have had the opportunity to go to the temple, and did so just last week. Um, are there serious sins in your life that need to be resolved with priesthood authorities as part of your repentance? And lastly, do you consider yourself worthy to enter the Lord's house and participate in temple ordinances. So I was encouraged before each of my interviews to ponder on those answers, read through those questions, and uh, think about my answers. Um, and as I, I studied, I came to realize that uh, entering the temple is a, it's an honor and it's a privilege. In that same address, uh, President Nelson said, 
Individual worthiness to enter the Lord's house requires much individual spiritual preparation. But with the Lord's help, nothing is impossible. In some respects, it is easier to build a temple than it is to build a people prepared for a temple. Individual worthiness requires a total conversion of mind and heart to be more like the Lord, to be an honest citizen, to be a better example, and to be a holier person. Close quote. Now, that seemed like a tall order to me, but I, I take comfort in the lesson that I learned recently. Uh, we don't go to the temple because we are already like God. Uh, we go there because we're trying to become more like Him, and we need help to do so. And that's why I prepared myself to go to the temple, because I know that I have need to become more holy, more righteous, more wise, and in, during my preparation um, to enter the temple, I was blessed with more spiritual experiences. Um, I will receive confirmation that I speak, when I speak truth, um, especially when I am bearing testimony. Um, and I consider it a, a great blessing that I was able to, um, to have a sacrament meeting at home for a while. Um, it was a neat opportunity to, even though I couldn't go to church, I blessed the sacrament with my father and my younger brother passed it. And that was, that was a unique opportunity and I would say absolutely a blessing. Um, I think it helped to bring the family closer together. Um, which is important. <laughs> so, in addition to preparing for the temple, I have prepared to serve a mission. To do so, I focused on increasing my knowledge of the gospel, and I've developed my testimony about the, um, the truths within. For example, I took an institute class um, for uh, mission prep, uh, when time permitted and when those classes were still uh, taking place. When some of my missionary friends came home temporarily for reassignment, um, I took the opportunity to, to study and learn from them, um, and that was that was one of the the most fun, most fun and uh, most engaging study sessions I've ever had. Um, for the, my friends who uh, just returned from the mission or those who haven't gone yet, um, recently I have been uh, doing study groups with them. Uh, we've been doing them either in person, typically in in my home or. Um, via a video conference, and we uh, just go over like a brief devotional and study the scriptures together. Uh, best way I can describe that is a delight. Uh, being able to study with people who are also engaged and interested in uh, learning more about the gospel and developing their testimonies is it's just fantastic. Uh, it's sometimes it's hard to to learn about the gospel when there's those around you who aren't interested or don't really care. That was a challenge I had in Sunday school. Um, you know, despite living in Utah, where um, a large portion of the population is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but many of them don't don't care, and that, that saddens me. Um, but uh, having having a chance to learn with those who do care and to those it, it matters to, that I far prefer that. <laughs> um, so getting to, to study with my, my friends has been a lot of fun. Um, lastly, brothers and sisters, I'd like to speak of preparation for the second coming of Christ. Um, while some of us currently have temple recommends and not all of us are actively preparing for a mission, this is a type of preparation that's going to be relevant to all of us. Uh, President Nelson in his April Enzyme message, talked about how we should be preparing. Before the second coming, Israel will be gathered on both sides of the veil. Uh, we have not only the ability, but a responsibility, I believe, to participate in it. Um, I already mentioned preparing ourselves to receive temple ordinances, but there are many who have passed on before us who have not had the opportunity to receive these ordinances. Um, that's why proxy temple work is so important. Um, it, they haven't had the, the uh, ordinances performed, and as a result, they would be barred from going to the celestial kingdom um, if, we, if we don't uh, help them. So we offer these, um, these proxy ordinances freely, um, and our ancestors are not forced or, or coerced into accepting the ordinances. Um, we offer them as a, as a gift. 
the full restoration of the gospel and the translation of the Book of Mormon is another sign, uh, two more signs that the second coming is soon approaching. So the Book of Mormon clarifies and witnesses of the truths that are within the Bible already and expanding missionary work in temples are being built around the globe. Um, those are both further evidences that um, the time is at hand. Uh, the work is accelerating, and I'm, I'm glad I get to be a part of it. Um, so I hope you'll join me in a gathering Israel, brothers and sisters. Lastly, preparedness for the second coming must come from within ourselves. We are in a turbulent time of natural disasters, wars, and rumors of wars, and the concept of the family itself is under attack. President Nelson encourages us to face the future with faith. In an address President Gordon B. Hinckley gave to college students at the Salt Lake Institute of Religion in 1983, he stated that fear is the antithesis of faith. So the word antithesis, um, not one that I, I commonly use, um, but by definition it means an exact opposite. So what we learn from uh, President Gordon B. Hinckley is that fear is an exact opposite of faith. And... <clears throat> So many of the, the adversaries attacks these days seem intended to make us afraid, to make us fear. Um, and so we need to hold to our faith to, in order to prevail. Elder Richard G. Scott gave us four tools to help us maintain and grow our faith. And I'll like, I'd like to go over, with, go over those with you. Um, the first one he lists is prayer. Uh, we should pray often and use it as a safeguard against the world. Um, pray whenever you can with your families, your companions, um, those you go to church with, um, and pray privately. Uh, pray for strength, safety, um, blessings. Pray for those you, you care about. And um, well, I mean, you can you can pray about just about anything. I also, I also believe that our, our Heavenly Father is interested in hearing about our day, our experiences. Um, Elder Richard G. Scott, in the same address, actually says um, that we should, we should share with him all of his, share with him all of our concerns, our fears, our worries, our successes, our hopes. Um, share everything with him in prayer. Um, the second thing, study the Word of God from both ancient and modern sources. Um, this includes both the scriptures. I've got a set right here. I've got my uh, trusty four stack, as we call it. Um, lots of good uh, doctrine from um, prophets and apostles past. But there's also um, modern day prophets. Um, the Quorum of the Twelve, the, uh, the prophet and his counselors... Uh, the general authorities, like the area of the 70, um, they, they're all, uh, we can all receive revelation from them, um, from, from both them and as we learn from the Spirit. So we should study the Word of God through their talks, as well as the ancient documents given to us. Um, third, when possible, have weekly family home evenings. Now, sometimes family home evenings are a little bit difficult to have, um, depending on various circumstances. But where possible, um, family home evenings should be a priority in the life. Um, the time invested is more important than the content, is what uh, Elder Scott says. So as long as we're making an effort to do that, um, excuse me, um, then we will have the, the protection and blessings associated with it. Um, it is a little bit different in regards to people like missionaries or um, young single adults where they, they don't have families. And so um, there's different organi uh, different ways that's organized. Um, and fourth, and lastly, um, go to the temple whenever you are able. So currently, many temples are restricted um, to just living ordinances only. However, we can still go to the temple grounds even if we can't go in person. Um, I didn't know that until recently, actually. Um, but there was a friend of mine who uh, mentioned that she was able to, to just sit on the temple grounds and uh, find peace and strength there. And I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Um, 
But she reminded me that it's it's dedicated ground. It's it's a holy place. So even if we can't go inside, um, we can still we can still be near the temple. And but naturally, as soon as we can go back inside and perform those saving ordinances for our ancestors, we absolutely should. Um, you know they they need us to help them. Uh, they need they need our help to find the records and. Uh, perform those various saving ordinances for them. However, until we can go back inside, um, we should uh, we should make our homes a holier place, since uh, it's difficult to go to the temple at this time. Lastly, um, brothers and sisters, I'd like to bear to you my testimony. I know the church is true. I know that God lives. I know that He loves us. And I know that his work will not be halted any longer. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that was my uh, re-recording of the talk. Um, slightly adjusted, of course, um, due to some different events occurring. Um, but I appreciate you uh, taking the time to listen to this. And I want to say, love you guys.